Hello and welcome back to Math 301 Combinatorics at CSU. Today we're going to be talking about Eulerian and Hamiltonian walks. These are special types of walks in a graph and we're covering section 8.8 8 and 8.9 here, so still in the graph theory chapter. And let's recall what a walk in a graph is. It's a sequence of vertices and edges, v0, e1, v1, e2, v2, e3, up to ek, vk, of vertices and edges, such that edge ei connects vertex vi minus one to vi for each i. So here's an example of a walk. If we start at v0 and then go to e1 uh, to v1, e2 to v2, e3 to v3, e4 to v4, this should be v4, and uh, e5. Um, well, sometimes you can have a walk that repeats a vertex or repeats an edge. So here e5 should lead to v5. So it's okay if v2 and v5 are the same vertex. It's just a sequence of the vertices and it can have repeats. And so here's v4 and v5. And here's, um, if, you, if you go along this edge then, repeat e2, well then that's e6. And then v1 is the same as v6. And so you can repeat edges, you can repeat vertices. And there's a lot of interesting questions about how many walks a graph has and, um, and very nice applications for uh, traveling on, on certain roads and, and uh, networks modeled by graphs. But right now, let's talk about a special type of graph called an Eulerian walk. And it's, it's somehow an efficient walk in the sense that every edge is used exactly once. So if you want to walk down every street in a certain um, grid of streets exactly once without repeating a street, um, can you do that on a given graph? Here's an example of an Eulerian walk. We went uh, around, around this path and then around the triangle. And is there an Eulerian walk on every graph? Turns out, no. So let's try to make an Eulerian walk on K4. So let's again try to get every edge exactly once here. Oh no, when I got to this vertex, I got stuck. I can't escape. I already used those three edges. I and mean, I'm not allowed to repeat an edge. So let's try again. Maybe I just got stuck. I, I need to do it some other way, right? So let's try to maybe go around the square first. Okay, let's go around the outside square and then do the diagonals. Oh no, we're stuck again. We got stuck at the lower right hand corner there. Um, it turns out that no, there's no way of doing an Eulerian walk on the complete graph K4 on four vertices. So let's see what are some criteria for there to be an Eulerian walk. Well, we actually know a necessary and sufficient condition for an Eulerian walk to exist. A connected graph has an Eulerian walk if and only if it has at most two vertices of odd degree. So we can look in the example of K4, what were the vertices and what were their degrees? Well, there was four vertices and each one has three edges attached to it. So you notice this one has three edges coming out of it. So does this one, so does this one, so does this one by symmetry. That has four edges of odd degree. We're only allowed at most two to have an Eulerian walk by this theorem. So that explains it for K4. And let's see why this theorem is true in general. So first let's show that um, if you have a vertex of odd degree, then the walk has to start or end at that vertex. So let's consider a vertex V of odd degree, say it has degree three, and say it doesn't start at that vertex. Say the, the walk goes th passes through that vertex at some point. Well, it has to cover every edge. So it has to pass through this vertex to get these edges. But then if you, if you go through it, every time you pass through V, you use two edges, and then there's still an odd number left. And eventually there's only one edge left, and we have to go around and, and cover that edge um, inward towards V at some point to cover the edge in the Eulerian walk. But then, oh no, we ended at V. And so actually we did end at V after all. So every, um, if V has odd degree, you either have to start or end at V. What that means is that there can be at most two vertices of odd degree because you only start one place and end one other place. That gives you two places that you could have odd degree. So we know we have to have at most two, but now the question is if we have at most two vertices of odd degree, is there guaranteed to be an Eulerian cycle or an Eulerian walk? So let's suppose G has at most two odd degree vertices and it's connected. And let's do it um, in cases. So first say G has zero odd degree vertices. So say there's, there's all even degree vertices like the triangle for instance, that has all even degree. And we'll prove this case by strong induction. So the base case, uh, we're doing strong induction on the number of edges. So if G has no edges, zero edges, then if it's a connected graph, it has to just be a point because there's no edges coming out of it. So it's just a point. And it has sort of trivially a walk 
to itself, right? Just V-naught. That's an Eulerian walk. Now for the strong induction hypothesis, we let n be at least one and we assume that any connected graph with less than n edges and all even degrees has an Eulerian walk. In fact, we're going to show it's an Eulerian cycle. It comes back to the same vertex you started at. So, um, so say we have uh, Eulerian walks of this form um, and let, let G be some connected graph with n edges with all even degrees. Now let's construct an Eulerian walk using this strong induction hypothesis. Start at any vertex like V0. If you, if you enter a vertex like V1, since V1 has even degree and you've only used one of its edges, you can still exit it. You can always exit it and get to some vertex V2. And then you can exit V2 and so on. And you can keep walking around the graph until you repeat some vertex. So you'll have to eventually make a cycle because there's only finitely many vertices. Eventually you have to repeat some vertex when you keep walking around like this. So the point is we can eventually make a cycle. So let's look at this red cycle, say that starts at V0. Um, and, and comes back to V0 in the graph. So we, all we've proven so far is that there's a cycle, not that there's an Eulerian circuit. So now consider all the connected components of the complement graph of this cycle. So you have this cycle sitting inside the big graph and let's color the other edges green in that big graph. The, and I mean the complement within the graph G, the, the, the edges that aren't in the cycle. Now, um, ex now we can extend this cycle into a longer path by using whatever Eulerian walk we have on the remaining connected components, because these remaining connected components will also have all even degrees because we walked through each of these points of the cycle using degree two each time. So subtracting two from a degree will still leave you, of an even degree will still leave you with an even degree. So we have these cycles and now we can just sort of trace, you know, if we go this way, if we're going this way, maybe from V2 around, we can pause at V0, trace around this Eulerian circuit and then continue our cycle, trace around this Eulerian path and then continue the cycle back. And so we just sort of augment our path uh, to get a longer Eulerian cycle. And so there's an Eulerian walk then uh, by the strong induction using those smaller uh, walks that we already assumed were there by the strong induction hypothesis. So now we know it's true for when you have zero odd degree vertices. Now say it has one odd degree vertex. Well, if it only has one vertex of odd degree and the rest even, then the sum is odd. An odd plus a bunch of even numbers is still odd. And that's impossible because we're supposed to have even degree. So we don't have to worry about case two. There are no such graphs. So case three is when G has two odd degree vertices, U and V. So now the, the trick is actually we can use case one, which we already proved, to, to prove case three. So the trick is to add an extra edge from U to V to make all the degrees even. If you add that extra edge, possibly doubling an edge if you already had it. So we're not considering simple graphs here. Um, if all the degrees are even then, we're, uh, we can consider an Eulerian walk of the entire thing, including that blue edge, and then just because it's a, because it's a cycle that's gonna end up at the same place you started, we can just make sure we start at U or V and go around this whole circuit. And then when we delete it, we, we can start at V instead and just end at U and not do that blue edge. And that forms an Eulerian walk of what remains. And so we, we just shift that cycle to start at the new edge, um, remove that edge, you get an Eulerian walk on just the black edges that we started with. So what we've shown actually is that if you have two vertices of odd degree, like U and V had degree three, then you have to start and end at those odd degree vertices. So now let's talk about Hamiltonian walks, which is the vertex analog of Eulerian walks. So a walk is Hamiltonian if it uses every vertex exactly once instead of using every edge exactly once. Now, in some cases, they're easier to find than Eulerian walks. For instance, K4 had no Eulerian walk, but there's a Hamiltonian walk. We went through every vertex exactly once. Not every edge, but we don't care about that for Hamiltonian walks. But here's an example of a graph that doesn't have a Hamiltonian walk. So if you try to maybe start here and, and cover every vertex exactly once, uh-oh, we got stuck at the end. Wait, let's try again. Um, so maybe we can, we can get this vertex down here by going around a different way, or you know, maybe we can turn downwards at this, this step. So let's, let's draw it again. And let's start here again, because we're gonna have to start at the end point. So let's go down to get this vertex. Oh no, but now I can't go this way because I would repeat this vertex. I can't go back because I would repeat that vertex. And so if you're only allowed to go to every vertex exactly once, sometimes you can't 
um, have a Hamiltonian walk. Now, Hamiltonian walks are a lot harder to classify than Eulerian walks. And in fact, it's a very uh, big open problem in mathematics to figure out which graphs have Hamiltonian walks and, um, and how to efficiently find a Hamiltonian walk. It's not as simple as the Eulerian case. So now you try, in this graph, does that have an Eulerian walk and does it have a Hamiltonian walk? So try to find them. And if you can't find them, explain why. So that's all for today. And we'll see you next time.